Now, the first demo we're going to have a look at is our Maps demo. And this is one of the standard demos that is included with Red Studio XC8. And the only change that I've made to it is the ability to display a custom icon on our map by clicking the Go button. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is what you need to set up to make this work across both iOS and Android. Now, on the iOS side, you don't have to set up anything specifically for iOS. There's no API key needed or any other specific set setting that you need to apply to make it work on iOS. It just works out of the box. And you can see here on the team app view component that we have aligned to the client. You can set anchors. There's options for bearing. There's uh, control options such as zoom, compass, my location. And those are options that you can set on the map view control. We also have gesture options that you can enable. And uh, you can choose from the normal, none, satellite, terrain, or hybrid options. Terrain is specific to the Android platform. And you can set tilt values, etc. Now, when it comes to Android, you will need to request an API key from Google. And I'll walk you through the steps needed here to do that. So the first thing I would recommend doing is going to our doc wiki. And here it outlines in depth how to request the API key. So you'll first need to browse to your app data roaming folder and locate the debug.keystore file. Now, if you don't ha have that file in the folder, you will need to deploy an app to Android and it will generate that file for you. So if you don't see that in the folder, that means that you haven't deployed an app yet. So just run an application for the Android target platform, it will generate that file. You will then need to locate the key tool uh, tool, which is located in your Java installation folder. So for example, C, Java, JDK, etc. And you'll find that tool in that folder. And then just opening a command line, you can switch to the above folder and then run this command. And you would prepend this here with the location where your key tool is located. And then it will display this information as you see here in the example. And it will give you a fingerprint. And this is the SHA1 value. So then what you need to do is you need to go back to your browser and just uh, logged into the Google Developer Console. You will need to have a Google account. And then you log in and you select Create a Project. And then under APIs and Auth, you select APIs. And then you select Google Maps Android API. And here you can enable it. And you can see I enabled it. You could also disable it. Now, once you've enabled it, you can click on View Reports and API Console. And it will bring you right here. And this is where you see the API access option. And you will select that. And then you need to click on Create New Android Key. And the Android Key is your SHA1 value, which you see right here. And this is unique to your machine. So this is what you see on the doc wiki is just an example. But when you run the key tool against your debug.keystore file, it will give you that SHA value that's specific to you. And you will enter that when you create a new Android key. So for example, you click here. You'll enter that, and it's followed by your um, app information. So for example, here, you will um, enter your SHA key, and then it's semicolon, and this is the bundle information. So for example, here, I have tab map project, as you can see here, dot com dot embarcadero dot tap map project and then I have com dot embarcadero dot map types which matches my map types project. Now the bundle information you can find if you go to project options and you want to make sure you have either the Android platform selected here or you can of course switch to that when you go to project options. And then you go and select the uh, version info here, and you will see the package name. And that's com.embarkadero. And then it's the name of your project, so dot map types. And that's the information that you need to enter here. And then after you've entered that, you will be able to create your Android API key, which you see right here. And that you need to enter as an additional value here inside your project options version info. So that's the first thing that you need to enter for project options is that generated API key. You then need to go to users permission and need to enable access network state. So make sure that's checked and set to true. And then the last step is to go to your entitlement list and enable maps service. So those are the three settings that you need to set for deploying your maps application to Android. Now let's have a look at the code of our application here. You can see we have a couple different controls. We have a trackbar, and that is 
um, changing the rotation. We have a latitude field and a longitude field. We also have our go button set up. And the go button is right aligned along with the longitude and latitude controls. And our track bar is left aligned. And we've set some margins for the different controls as well to ensure that they look uh, appear properly and size correctly for the different platforms. I also have a custom bitmap, and this is my bitmap source. It's our T-Image control, and I've loaded a custom bitmap to it here, as you can see. And this is our, our Delphi product icon. And then we have a segment and control. So we have three speed buttons that are styled. So you can see here the normal speed, the normal map setting is segmented button left. We have the satellite option, which is segmented button middle. And then we have the hybrid option, which is segmented button right. And this is just the styling that you can choose from by selecting the control and then selecting an option from the style lookup drop down menu. Now let's have a look at the code that we set up for the go button. So what we're doing here is we're determining the map coordinates based on the latitude and longitude locations that are entered into our edit controls. And then we are displaying the icon, the, the custom bitmap, and the text on the icon will say dropped marker in this case. Now on the map itself, we've also set up an on-click event and that allows us to place uh, pins wherever we tap on the map as well. So you can see here we have the my mark, map marker descriptor and we're creating that based on the position that we click on and then we'll automatically add a marker for us. And then of course for the three buttons we have normal, map tmap type dot normal, tmap type dot satellite and tmap type dot hybrid. Now let's have a look here at our Android 7 inch tablet layout. You can see the Android Lollipop design. And I've customized the width of the different controls to ensure that it fits properly on my Android 7 inch tablet. And then I also have my iPad layout here as well. So now I'm going to deploy this application to my Android tablet. So here you can see the Maps app running on my Nexus 7, and I can rotate it using the trackbar. And of course, I can also position um, the map by entering latitude and longitude values. So for example, I'm going to enter a value here for the San Francisco Bay Area, and it's automatically going to navigate to that location here on the map. As you can see here, it placed it near San Francisco, which is the location that I entered. And I can pinch and zoom, of course, to zoom in on my map. And then I can choose from the different map types as well. So here we have the hybrid map. We have the satellite view. And then, of course, we have the normal map again. And you can also see as I'm clicking on the map, it's displaying the map pins based on the map click event that we set up in our demo application. You can see this is what the UI is going to look like. And I'm going to deploy it to my iPad Mini 2. So here you see the app running on my iPad Mini 2. You can see I can use the trackbar to rotate it. I can also use gesture input to rotate it, to pinch and zoom, etc. can enter latitude and longitude values. display the location on my map here and of course I can also choose from three different map types and then on map click I can display pins on my map as well now here you see the tapped map demo and this demo is similar to the previous demo but it has tab set up and on tab click we're going to navigate to St. Petersburg on the map and on tab click here we're going to navigate to San Francisco. It's also going to give us uh, information about our location here on the camera view, our camera info label and then we have a plus and a minus button for zooming in and zooming out. And you can also see we have a terrain button. Terrain is an additional setting that's available with the Android maps only. And so what we've set up here is an on-click event that sets the map type to terrain for both San Francisco and St. Petersburg. Now let's deploy this application here to our Android tablet.
And here you can see the app running on my Nexus 7, and it's displaying San Francisco. And I can click on terrain, and it's going to give me the terrain map type. Just like I could also click on satellite, and it's going to give me the satellite map type. And I'm going to click on St. Petersburg, and you can see here that it's now locating St. Petersburg on the map for me. And I can click on normal and I'm going to get the city information with all the map labels. Now the last maps demo I'm going to show you is my California Surf Spots demo. And this application uses uh, a REST API to locate surf locations and then load them and assign them to the different locations on the map. So we have our REST request here that's locating all surf spots. We have our REST response component, our REST client component that makes a call to api.spitcast.com. And we also have our REST response data set adapter that's linked to our REST response component and is using FDMEM table as our data set. Now when we right click on the REST request, we can execute that and it's going to tell us that it was executed successfully. And we can right click on our FDMEM table here to access the fields editor and you can see that we got back the county name, latitude, longitude, spot ID and spot name. And we're going to use the latitude, longitude values to display the relevant surf locations on our map. So if we have a look here um, at our code, we've set up an on form create event, uh, longitude field, latitude field, my location, descriptor and the spot name. And so the first thing we're going to do is execute our REST request and then we're going to set the longitude, latitude field, and spot name to the relevant FDMEM table fields. So we have an FDMEM table dot field, field by name, and we're going to search for longitude, latitude, and spot name. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the latitude field, longitude field from our REST API call and use them to display the location on the map. And then we're going to use our custom icon to identify that location on the map, and we're going to use the spot name as the annotation. So let's have a quick look here. We have an icon that I've set to invisible, and it's only shown once the locations have been identified on the map, and it's actually executed the REST request. And you can see this is a little uh, surf fin icon. And I'm going to deploy this to my iPad mini. So here you can see the Surf Spot Finder app running and on uh, form create we've executed our REST API request and it's displaying all the different surf locations on our map here with our custom icon. And you can see I can pinch to zoom in. I can also rotate my map if I wanted to. And then as I tap on each of the items it's displaying the spot name for that particular surf spot. And of course, the world famous Surf Spot Mavericks is also seen here on the map as well.